Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 702. And my opponent started off here with e4 and I went for the French defense with e6. And now he played with uh, d3, which is actually the second choice here in the uh, database, but uh, not a particularly good choice. In fact, the chess engine, when I looked at it, uh, gave uh, black an advantage <laughs> through the opening, starting with this move. Anyway, I just play d5, continuing with the normal French setup. He goes knight to d2, and I go c5. I guess knight f6 is a little more popular right here. I wasn't really sure. I don't see it that often. It seems c5 is a fine move as well. And so he goes with g3, going for his king's Indian setup. I went knight c6. Um, when I said it's not a particularly good opening, I mean, it's fine. Uh, you know, Bobby Fischer used to play this way, so certainly you can get a playable game. It's just that it doesn't... Uh, uh, lead to as much of a white advantage as some other lines against the French. So really, it's worthwhile if you're going to play white against the French to invest a little time and uh, play a good line. <laughs> anyway, he went uh, bishop g2. <clears throat> I went knight f6. And then he went uh, knight to f3. So it looks like we're following known territory. Now I branch out. Like I said, I don't know this opening, and so I play a, a move that's not in the opening book. But... Um, Looking at it later with the chess engine, it seems like um, what I played is just fine. So, um, I mean, a normal move here would be bishop e7. You can see that's very logical. Just continuing to develop, he might castle, and I could castle. And we both get uh, playable positions, say rookie one, to put a little pressure on the center, try and push that pawn forward. But I had a different idea, <clears throat> and that was to uh, exchange immediately. And the point is, and after he takes back, I can play e5, and now... I'm kind of uh, permanently, or at least for the moment at least, maybe it's not permanent, but I've kind of shut down this bishop here, which is the, uh, um, you know, the best piece in uh, white's position potentially. So it's locked in by its own pawn now. So this seems to be a fine way to play. The chess engine approves and gives, uh, gives black an advantage here. I want bishop e7. He went c3. I castled. Went queen e2. So all just uh, normal moves getting our pieces out. This this was uh, probably a good idea. This c3 move keeps my knight from coming into those squares and uh, causing more trouble. The one thing, you know, one, one of the downsides, I guess, of this position from my point of view is it seems like it's kind of uh, blocked up. So I don't know how I will make progress and break through uh, when it comes to it. But certainly I'm at least equal in this position. See, I went to queen c7 here. He went to h4. I think h4 is a mistake. It opens up these squares for me to put a piece on. Um, and um, there were certainly plenty of other moves that he had. I think um, maybe figuring out where to place this bishop, getting the knight out of the way and putting that bishop somewhere would be a better <clears throat> better plan at this point. Anyway, I just took advantage of this uh, hole right away, put my bishop there. He went knight to c4. Looks like he's trying to uh, gang up on my uh, <clears throat> on my e-pawn, and I just kicked the knight back right away. But actually, I played that move too quickly, and it's a bit of a mistake. The chess engine wants me to just play quietly here with uh, h6, just uh, keep uh, keep control of this uh, g5 square, I guess, so he can't uh, easily put a bishop or a knight there. And um, so just, just play in that way. Uh, you know, this is a uh, almost, well, there is one open file, so I can't say it's a closed position, but it has kind of a closed character. And um, maybe it's more appropriate to do some slow maneuvering rather than these uh, violent uh, pawn attacks. But the, the real reason that b5 is a mistake here is that um, when the knight goes back to e3, in a very natural move, it's, it's a double attack in a way. The queen is hitting this loose pawn, and the knight is hitting the bishop. Now, my bishop, fortunately for me, is defended, but I really didn't um, calculate this, and I didn't... Um, I didn't really notice, actually, that the bishop could be traded. And, and um, after a6, you know, to defend my b-pawn, um, he can just take that bishop off and win the, uh, he has the bishop pair advantage. So this is a swing in the evaluation where if, if black had played like this, um, let's see, he can kind of force my knight back with this move knight e1 and get his knight over to c2 is a chess engine line. Um, and white's better now. He's just uh, got the bishop pair and uh, in a more comfortable position. So uh, so this move b5, that all started because of b5. It's actually a mistake. Um, but I, I don't know what uh, was going on in my opponent's head here. Maybe he didn't notice that the bishop was uh, could be traded off. I certainly didn't notice it. 
<laughs> and uh, anyway, he immediately played uh, Knight F5, so that, that one-time opportunity is gone now. So, so we're back in the range of uh, even or slightly better for black. Um, let's see, after Knight F5, I put uh, Rook on the open file. He played uh, Bishop to G5. I went h6 to kick it, and this uh, provokes a bunch of exchanges. I don't mind um, if he takes my dark squared bishop here because um, I have a dark squared pawn in the center. So this bishop is my uh, my bad bishop. It's the worst of the two bishops. If he trades his knight for the bishop, this is this is not really bad for me at all. And then he immediately uh, gives back his um, gives me back the bishop pair, or gives up the bishop pair, and trades off my knight. Um, so now I'm, I'm a little bit better again. I, I have this uh, pressure on um, on f3 there. Let's see. He goes queen e3 to unpin immediately. That's that's good. And I went with c4. He went with uh, knight h2 uh, to chase my bishop away, and I uh, dropped the bishop back to e6. And um, now he plays f4. So up to this point, it's still in the range of about even, really. You know, it's only been slightly better for. Uh, for black at various times, but not a huge advantage. Um, and there's a number of different ways for uh, for white to play this position. A couple of ideas the chess engine had. One is just to, to bring a rook to the a-file and uh, oppose that. Um, another idea here would be to get counterplay on the queen side with the move a4. But instead, I guess um, white had set this uh, position up with the idea of uh, a kingside attack, and he kind of uh, goes ahead regardless of the position. And this is just a bad a bad uh, move. <laughs> it opens up the position in a way that favors me. So, you, you know, you just don't want to automatically open up a position like this. You want to kind of uh, check it out and see who this uh, really benefits. But my pieces are just a little better placed to uh, take advantage of this opening. My rook on the open file here and um, <clears throat> and his pieces over here on the king side don't really impress. They don't seem to be uh, in a position to really jump into the attack quickly. So um, so actually, uh, black has a winning advantage from this point. I mean, that uh, one move, even though it doesn't lose material, uh, gives a winning edge to black. Let's see, he took with the rook, not wanting to mess up his uh, kingside pawn structure. Let's see, he chases my queen back, but um, and then he brings his rook to the f-file. But my f-pawn is adequately guarded, and my rook can now come in to... Uh, d3 here. Let's see, he played queen to b6, harassing my knight. Um, and I, I moved my knight over here to e5, and he grabbed a pawn. So um, he's, he has got a pawn for his attack. <laughs> and uh, so he is a pawn up at the moment, but um, well, actually his, his g3 pawn is hanging. I'm not sure if I noticed that in the game either, but I could just have taken on g3 with the rook, and this would be good. Um, turns out the move I played is good as well. I was noticing the rook was operating in this direction, and uh, also his queen was threatening my pawn. So, so the idea of pushing that pawn forward and creating some weaknesses on the queen side kind of appealed to me in this position. But rook takes g3 would have been a good move as well. Anyway, he took the, the pawn, and then I grabbed with the queen, and I saw that I would have uh, this uh, pressure on these pawns. It's uh, really difficult for him to defend them. Um, he just played knight of three, trying to get his knight into the game. I went ahead and traded it off. And uh, we got these trades in. And after all of these exchanges, I grabbed the b-pawn. And we're back to material equality, but actually black is, uh, through all of this, black has been winning, even when, even when black was down a pawn, because um, <clears throat> it's just the nature of the position. My, my pieces are better. And uh, this, this pawn is much more dangerous. So uh, this is still a winning position for black. He played uh, rook f2 to chase my queen away. Went to queen to d4 here, pinning his rook. And uh, he went king to g2, unpinning the rook immediately. So there's a nice tactic here if you guys want to uh, pause the video and see if you can spot it. It's uh, black's turn. What's the best move for black here? Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. The uh, tactic, uh, which I missed, is uh, kind of a nice move. It's this uh, bishop h3 check idea. You should always look for little little tricks like this. The king is um, defending the knight. I mean, it's defending the uh, rook. So if king takes bishop, then queen takes rook. Actually, that's the uh, chess engine's uh, 
recommended line. It thinks that's uh, White's best choice. Uh, the thing you have to look out for is, um, well, where else can the king go to keep the rook? It can only go to g1. And then you have this uh, killer move, rook to b8. And this threat of uh, rook to b1 is uh, really quite deadly. So uh, um, anyway, that's a, that's a winning a winning attack for um, for black there. Um, let's see, I just played rook to c8. I'm just getting my rook behind the pass pawn. This is also winning. Let's see, he went uh, queen to b7, harassing my rook, but the rook is defended by the bishop. So I just uh, pushed the c pawn forward, and now he played bishop g4, which is just an uh, outright blunder. This just uh, gives up a piece, and um, well, maybe he thought um, the he would be able to take on f7 and get some some uh, threats going, but there's really no threats here. Um, my queen is holding on to the g7 pawn, so so really this didn't accomplish anything for white. Just uh, <clears throat> it just lost a piece and also uh, took his pieces away from the uh, c file here, where my where my pawn is about to queen. Let's see. He went uh, queen to g6 here. I just keep pushing because I don't care if he takes my bishop at this point. <laughs> he takes, and I get a queen. So um, pretty straightforward win from this point. Let's see. He went queen back to g6. Maybe he wants to bring his rook here and try and mate me on g7, but my queen is still guarding g7, and, uh, and the other queen is free to deliver checks. Let's see. I went uh, queen to um, b1 here. Oh yeah, I guess I was uh, looking at this check here, forcing an exchange of queens, um, because that kind of a, it's a kind of fork between the queen and the king. There, he went uh, rook to f4. It eliminates, cancel that. He went rook to f4, defending the pawn, and um, let's see, I went queen b to b2 check, and uh, that's not the fastest way. There's there's some cute uh, wins here when you have this much force. There's all kinds of mating ideas. Um, but the fastest mate here, uh, just to show you guys, is uh, rook to c2 check. If the king goes to f3, then uh, queen b to d1 is a mate. So <laughs> all these uh, crisscrossing diagonals and lines of force, and there is no there is no escape from uh, that setup. Let's see. Uh, or the king could run over here to h3, and this is a little bit longer. Let's see. The queen drops back to give a check from here. You can block with the rook. That, that's the stuff, toughest defense. And this queen can come over, taking advantage of the pin on the rook, deliver this check at this diagonal. Uh, the rook is guarding the uh, squares going backwards. The king has to go forward. Um, then this uh, other queen comes in and delivers another check. And um, after rook to f3, then queen takes rook is mate. So anyway, that would have been quickest. Let's uh, just go through. I, I just... Uh, Continued uh, to maneuver my pieces and deliver some checks, but I didn't find the uh, fastest way to uh, to do this. But eventually, after queen d1, he resigned here. If he if he um, <clears throat> if he brings his rook back, then I have the queen takes f3 uh, mate idea again. And otherwise, his king is running. I have queen f3 check. The king runs here. I have queen takes check here, and the king has to run again. Uh, eventually, he gets mated. So. <laughs> The king gets chased out to the open board, open board and gets mated. So he resigned at this point. It was kind of a, a fun king hunt at the end and uh, interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below and I'll see you again soon.